One of the comments I received in the last uh, 10 Watt Amplifier video, and I'll include a link below, was that uh, how would you go once you've got the data uh, extracted from your oscilloscope and uh, in Python, how would you do some Fourier analysis on that? What, what code would you use? What are the inbuilt functions? Uh, what code could you write yourself? So I thought I'd uh, do a, video, a quick video on that. Um, but just a, a quick background on the Fourier analysis, and believe me, I'm not in any way an expert in this stuff. I'm just, uh, I'm just hacking around here. Uh, but basically, Fourier analysis takes data in the time domain, such as you, that you get from an oscilloscope where you're graphing, say, let's say, voltage over time, and it transforms that into the frequency domain. So instead of along the x-axis, you've got uh, time, along the x-axis is frequency. And then typically on the y-axis, it's either uh, the dB of the, uh, the ma of the magnitude or the, um, or the magnitude itself. So what I plan on doing in this video is, um, is four things. Firstly, is use the, to use the output from the amplifier and capture a time domain signal. Then to uh, read that data into Python, as I've done before, but in this case, produce uh, an FFT output using the inbuilt function as well as some homegrown code. Then to graph the output of the, the Fourier transform and show how you can analyze the frequency, demo, frequency uh, components of the signal. And then finally, to compare that output from the, uh, the code running in Python to the actual, uh, that same signal analyzed with the spectrum analyzer. Okay, the first thing to do is to capture the output here. And what I want is a distorted signal. So I've got the amplifier set up as before. Let me uh, create that distorted signal there. So I'm using five volts peak to peak on the input, P produces a nice distorted signal. And the other thing I wanna change is actually increase the horizontal time base so that I get more points in the, um, in the, in the uh, captured data. Um, more points in the captured data gives me greater resolution on the, um, on the uh, Fourier transform when I actually do it. And just going through some setup on the, uh, on the oscilloscope here, I've got type set to CSV, and then parameter save is off. So what uh, parameter save off does is, if you leave it on, there's a whole pile of parameters that appears at the very top of the CSV file, and you kind of have to parse them out, so I'd prefer not to have them at all. So basically, let me capture that signal net now. So you press this button to save, you press it again, the run stop light quickly flashes, and then the, uh, the file is saved. So I've got that saved now to the USB stick. I'll take the USB stick over to the computer and then we'll extract the data. So before moving on to the code, it's worth just um, uh, reviewing the discrete Fourier transform function itself. And this is the one that's uh, implemented in the code below. And what this does is it produces uh, where N is the actual number of samples in the data set. This produces a series of zero to N on two um, um, complex numbers. So you can hear, here's the real component here, here's the complex component here. And so what you do is you vary uh, k here from zero to n on two, and then k gets substituted in the formula here. And then xn is the uh, actual uh, uh, measurement uh, at, that, uh, at that point in the, uh, in the data series. So let's move on to the code and, and see that implemented in the code. So here's the code that implements that, a little function calc DFT here. And it just starts by uh, initializing the, the output. And note we've got real output, we've got an imaginary output, and then we've got a, a magnitude output, which is the square root of real plus imaginary uh, squared uh, for, for each uh, data point in the output. Uh, DFT len is that uh, the signal length uh, divided by two that I mentioned before, and then you simply iterate over DFT len length, populating the real and the imaginary part using the formula that I just showed you. And then after each uh, after each k is calculated, the magnitude at the kth component is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the output of that, uh, that DFT function. So a couple of things to note here. So the actual number of samples uh, in, the, in the data set, let me just move over to here so you can see that. So the actual number of samples in the data set is 7,000. So the number of points calculated in the uh, DFT function will be exactly half that, or 3,500. So this is 3,500 data points here. 
and this is the log of the of the magnitude of the of, of each of those xk elements uh, the log of the mag of the magnitude is typically what's displayed in a spectrum analyzer so just to do a, a quick interpretation of this graph so each of the peaks uh, in the in the graph here represents a frequency component in the output uh, so you can see here let's just zoom in on this on this section here so you can you can see here we've got a peak right here and if you can just see down the bottom there that's around about seven megahertz as expected because it's a uh, seven megahertz signal loaded up with harmonics but you can see there's also a peak there's also a a peak here at 14 megahertz as expected but an even bigger peak here at 21 megahertz so uh, that square wave output is basically uh, the sum of all the odd harmonics and you can see there so we've got a peak here at roughly 21 megahertz we've got another peak here at uh, at uh, roughly 35 megahertz and then another one here at uh, 49 megahertz so they're all the, uh, the odd harmonics of that signal. So the next question is, how do I turn, I, I get basically 3,500 data points output here. How do I turn that 3,500 uh, 3, uh, output data points into frequencies uh, as I've done here? Well, let's, show, let's have a look at the code that does that. Okay, so I've zoomed into the portion of the code that, uh, that uh, transforms those 3500 data points into the actual frequency and you can see here so that step one is to calculate the sample rate and the sample rate here is just the time difference between I mean this is just the first and uh, the first and second sample so that's the sample rate I then calculate this so-called Nyquist rate which is twice as slow as the sample rate and then each point in the graph each uh, point in the graph will be one divided by, and then all in brackets, the Nyquist weight times the number of points. And then the maximum frequency is simply the integer value of one divided by the, the Nyquist weight, again, divided by a million. I divide by a million there just so it shows four, 500 in the output and not uh, 500 million. So uh, one of the things that this calculates here is the hertz per point. So this is hertz per point in the calculated DFT output. And just looking up the variable explorer, you can see that in this case, the hertz per point is 142, uh, about 142 kilohertz. So each point in that graph re represents an increase in uh, the frequency of 142 kilohertz. So just back to the graph again. Uh, let's uh, let's zoom into the graph between zero and a hundred megahertz, and then we'll go to the spectrum analyzer and confirm that uh, what we see in the output here matches uh, on the spectrum analyzer. So there's the graph between uh, zero and a hundred megahertz. You can see there that here's the peaks at the odd harmonics there, and we've also got some little peaks on the even harmonics as well. Let's go over to the, set, the spectrum analyzer and confirm what we see here is the same as that. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the graph uh, produced by the Python code R over to the left here. We see my spectrum analyzer over to the right here. Let's turn on the signal, see what we see. Now they're both, uh, obviously the signal's going into the spectrum analyzer through, a, uh, uh, through an attenuator, but there's, you can see that the output here matches the the output here so you can see we've got two peaks here so this is 7 and 21 megahertz and then there's a little peak between them at 14 megahertz and then you've got these other two peaks here at uh i'm just going to turn this off the uh, amplifier is going to get uh, going to get pretty hot so let's just go to that peak so that's at roughly 35 megahertz and that matches this peak here and then you can see you've got a uh, an even harmonic uh, peak in between this this and this so and then we go down here um, this is upwards of around about I think 63 uh, megahertz let's just go off to the right yeah 63 megahertz there and then we've got some little peaks off to the off to the uh, right there so that shows that uh, um, the um, 
results produced by the FFT running in Python are pretty faithful to the, uh, the actual uh, frequency components as shown on the spectrum analyzer. So I've captured uh, one more trace just for, just for chuckles. Um, so here it is up here. I've already extracted it from the oscilloscope. You can see it's not as rich in harmonics as the signal that we saw before. But uh, let's, let's maximize the, uh, the spectrum, uh, spectrum analysis here and zoom in again as we did before to 100 megahertz and then compare and contrast this to what we see on the spectrum analyzer. So let's turn the spectrum analyzer on and you can see here, here's the fundamental frequency right here at 7 megahertz in, in both graphs. And then you, you've got a much, much uh, reduced sort of even harmonic right there. And uh, I've just turned it off. Uh, bear, bear with me. Let me turn it back on. Uh, so here's that much reduced even harmonic here. And then we go up to the, uh, the third harmonic here at, tw at 21 megahertz. And then obviously we've got the uh, fifth and seventh harmonics here. Let me just move over to those so you can see them. Bear with. Uh, where am I? There we go. So at 21 megahertz, 35 megahertz. And then finally, this one's at 49 megahertz. Uh, right here um, and then there's this shows a little peak here which uh, in, I think is no it's not it's not showing on the uh, the spectrum analyzer at all let me turn the resolution bandwidth down a little bit and see if we can capture that that trailing harmonic there and we don't oh, that's interesting I, I'm not sure why that's uh, why that's not showing there but anyway that's uh, a, a, another comparison that sort of shows a faithful kind of uh, here's the the actual signal and then here's the signal pr produced by that uh, DFT function. And finally, uh, just to sum up, I mean, obviously, uh, this uh, sort of manually entered uh, discrete Fourier transform function is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, in SciPy, there's all these f uh, kind of functions uh, are all inbuilt. And so this is an example of using the, uh, the inbuilt uh, FFT function from the SciPy toolkit. Um, so it's just FFT and then voltage. It's a little bit different in that it, it, it actually creates uh, an FFT that has the full 7,000 points in it. But one side of that graph is just a reflection of the other side. So just seeing those two figures, so uh, bear with. So figure three is the um, output from the inbuilt FFT function. And figure one is, sorry about this, I'm clicking around madly here. So figure one is the output from the, the function that uh, was written by hand and figure three is the inbuilt function and, and you can see they're, uh, they're, they're identical there. So, uh, so anyway, means that you don't have to uh, kind of key the code in but uh, it's kind of nice to see the underlying code that calculates this uh, for, for such a fantastic fun function. It's, uh, it's, it's such a simple amount of code. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like, a, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm no expert in this stuff. This is very much a kind of a layman's view of the, of the Fourier transforms. I'll, I'll include some links uh, in the video to, uh, to so, sort of some more reading if you're, if you're interested in kind of taking the knowledge of Fourier transforms further. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll include a couple of links there. Anyway, that's a wrap for this video.